Old Testament, there are many characters that are often not discussed in depth, particularly those shrouded in mystery. Some of these characters are only briefly mentioned without their names being revealed. However, in ancient writings and books from various biblical canons, we can find more detailed information about these individuals. In this video, we will delve into the history of Ham's wife, exploring her origins and unique qualities. This is another episode in our series on the matriarchs of humanity. Don't forget to like and keep watching the video. In this episode, we will focus on the wives of Noah's three sons, specifically Ham's wife. These women, who were aboard Noah's Ark, were part of Noah's family and survived the Great Flood as narrated in the book of Genesis. While the Bible does not mention their names, their existence is confirmed in Genesis 6 verse 18, where God instructs Noah to bring his wife and his son's wives onto the ark. To gain a deeper understanding of these women, we turn to ancient Jewish tradition, where we find a remarkable manuscript called the Book of Jubilees. This ancient text supplements the biblical account with additional details such as genealogies, names, precise dates, and specific calendars. It also addresses the history of the patriarchs, religious ordinances, and the laws observed by the ancient Israelites. Although the Book of Jubilees is not considered canonical by most Jewish traditions and is not included in the standard Jewish or Christian canon, it is valued by some Jewish communities and regarded as an important text for understanding religious thought and the history of Judaism in the Second Temple period. The book has been preserved in various languages and manuscripts, including Ethiopian, Greek, and Latin. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church considers this book canonical, and it is also esteemed by Jews converted to Judaism, known as Beta Israel or Falashas. In the Book of Jubilees, the wives of Noah's sons are named. According to this manuscript, Ham's wife is called Nelt Tamak. She is described as the mother of many peoples, including African peoples and other groups with origins related to Ham and his wife Nelt Tamak. She is remembered as the matriarch of African peoples, and her descendants spread throughout the continent, giving rise to various cultures and civilizations. Her legacy is deeply rooted in African history, influencing traditions, languages, and connections to the land across generations. According to the Silene Oracles, Nelt enjoyed extraordinary longevity, living for centuries. This was attributed to her belonging to a pre-Diluvian generation, born before the Great Flood when people had incredibly long life expectancies, with some living up to 900 years. During her extended lifespan, Ham's wife, Nelt Tamak, made several remarkable prophecies. According to the Silene Oracles, all three wives of Noah's sons were prophetesses and conveyed predictions to their generations and the nations descended from them. Nelt Tamak, like the other wives, played a significant role in transmitting prophecies to her descendants. In Christian traditions dating from the second century after Christ, there is a text called the Syriac Terum, also known as Terum Pseudo-Jonathan or Terum Yami II. It is a translation or paraphrase of the Old Testament in Aramaic, erroneously attributed to Jonathan ben Uzziel. The Syriac Terum primarily focuses on the historical books of the Old Testament. While not widely used in Jewish or Christian contexts today, it provides interesting insights into the interpretation and translation of the Bible in antiquity. According to St. Hippus, a Christian writer, there is a tradition where the names of Ham's wife and Japheth's wife are changed to other names. In this tradition, Ham's wife is named Zedet Nabu. In one ancient Christian legend related to Ham's wife, it is said that during the time of the flood, God instructed Noah to destroy the first person who announced the beginning of the flood. However, at that moment, Ham's wife was baking bread, and when the water suddenly rushed out of the oven, destroying the bread, she exclaimed that the flood had begun. She began to shout and proclaim that the flood was starting. According to this tradition, God decided to revoke his earlier command so that Noah wouldn't destroy his own daughter-in-law, a member of his own family who was about to be saved from the great flood. According to the Book of Genesis and the Book of Jubilees, Ham's wife, Nelt Tamak, had four sons with him, Cush, Mra, Put, and Canaan. It is worth noting that the first three sons gave rise to various nations primarily in the African region. However, Canaan, the fourth son, was the ancestor of the Canaanites, 
also known as the ancient Phoenicians of the Middle East. They were enemies and rivals of the Israelites for many centuries. Welcome to the Sacred Scriptures channel. Today, we embark on a fascinating exploration of the lesser-known characters in the Old Testament. In particular, we turn our attention to the wives of Noah's three sons, with a focus on Ham's wife. These women, who accompanied their husbands aboard Noah's Ark, played a pivotal role in the survival and subsequent repopulation of the earth after the Great Flood. While the Bible does not provide explicit details about the names and backgrounds of these women, we can glean additional insights from ancient writings and texts. One such remarkable manuscript is the Book of Jubilees, a valuable source that supplements the biblical narrative with genealogies, precise dates, and additional historical and cultural information. Although not universally recognized as canonical, the Book of Jubilees holds significance in certain Jewish communities and sheds light on the religious thought and history of Judaism during the Second Temple period. According to the Book of Jubilees, Ham's wife is referred to as Nelt Tamak. She is described as the mother of diverse peoples, including African populations and other groups linked to Ham and Nelt Tamak's lineage. As the matriarch of African peoples, her influence resonates throughout the continent, shaping various cultures, civilizations, and traditions that endure across generations. Notably, Nelt Tamak is said to have lived an exceptionally long life, spanning centuries. This is attributed to her belonging to a pre-Diluvian generation, an era marked by extraordinary longevity before the devastating flood described in the Bible. During her extended lifespan, Nelt Tamak is believed to have possessed prophetic abilities. The Silene Oracles, an ancient source, depict all three wives of Noah's sons as prophetesses who conveyed divinely inspired predictions to their respective generations and the nations that descended from them. These prophecies played a significant role in shaping the destiny and course of history for their descendants. Expanding our exploration into Christian traditions, we encounter the Syriac Terum, also known as Terum Pseudo-Jonathan or Terum Yami II. This text, written in Aramaic, provides a unique perspective on the Old Testament, primarily focusing on its historical books. While not widely recognized today, the Syriac Terum offers valuable insights into ancient interpretations and translations of the Bible, providing a glimpse into the literary and cultural traditions of Judaism during its production. In Christian folklore dating back to the 2nd century, there is an intriguing legend associated with Ham's wife. According to this tale, during the time of the flood, God commanded Noah to destroy the first person who proclaimed the onset of the cataclysmic event. However, Ham's wife, engrossed in baking bread, witnessed the water unexpectedly flooding out of her oven, obliterating the bread. Startled by this event, she exclaimed that the flood had indeed begun. Hearing her declaration, God revoked his command, sparing Noah's daughter-in-law from destruction. This legend highlights the compassion and intervention of a merciful deity within the narrative. Turning to the biblical account, we learn that Ham's wife, Nelt Tamak, bore him four sons, Cush, Mra, Put, and Canaan. It is noteworthy that the descendants of the first three sons predominantly populated various regions of Africa, contributing to the rich tapestry of cultures and nations on the continent. However, Canaan, the fourth son, diverged from this pattern. He became the progenitor of the Canaanites, an ancient people inhabiting the Middle East, particularly the region known as Canaan. Throughout history, the Canaanites emerged as adversaries and rivals of the Israelites, playing a significant role in biblical narratives. By exploring the accounts found in the Book of Genesis, the Book of Jubilees, and various Christian traditions, we unearth a wealth of information regarding Ham's wife and her pivotal role in the post-flood world. These narratives offer insights into the origins of African peoples, the transmission of prophecies, and the interconnectedness of different nations and cultures throughout history. We are embarking on an extraordinary trip to uncover the history of our black and African forefathers. According to the Bible, all present-day humans are descended from Noah's three sons. Get ready for some thrilling material, 
Embrace her pork and mustard people of African descent and those with darker skin tones whose ancestry originates from Ham, one of Noah's sons, are included in this. Brothers Shem and Japheth symbolize the Israelites and are related to Ham. Arab nation Europeans, Asians, Jews, Syrians, etc., as well as Japanese tedits occasionally, Ham is identified in the Bible the ancestor of all Africans and black people who descended from Noah's son. He is mentioned in connection with the ancient Egyptians in the Book of Psalms, and his name is always linked to Africa. It's interesting to note that old Jewish and other traditions also claim that he has African origin. Allusions to African lands and peoples permeate the idea of Ham's progeny. The name Ham also has a dark or charred connotation in ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, and other languages, which may have something to do with the shade of his hair and skin. Lines 6-14 to 14 of chapter 10 of Genesis provide insight into the genealogy of Ham and his descendants, the Hamic people. In the novel, Ham's offspring are mentioned. Canaan, father of the Canaanites, and Cush, father of many Africans, are both described as sons of Horus. It is worth noting that Arabs, Jews, Syrians, and others referred to Egypt as Mizraim, a name bestowed upon it by its founder Pharaoh. The term Canaan may mean either a specific location or a people group. Going Kush, it is worth noting that the people of Samaria, who are believed to have descended from Nimrod Kush's disobedient son, are believed to have originated from Old Babylon. Additionally, there are individuals from South India and populations from various parts of Africa, such as Malians, who are believed to have descended from Ham's first son. Many nations and peoples can trace their ancestry back to Kush, including the Ethiopians and the people of Nubia, formerly known as the Kingdom of Kush. The Eritreans people from Kenya, it is said that the Gabonese, Kandas, and Vantas have Kushite. Ethiopia is often linked to the name Kush in biblical context. Canaan and Mizrahi, two African languages that originally meant Ethiopia or black, were also descendants of Ham. According to popular belief, the ancient Egyptians and several North African peoples, notably the Berbers and Targs, descended from Mahi. Aramin, Arabs, and Israelites all call Egypt Mizra. In Psalm 78:51. It says that God struck the firstborn in Egypt, who were the first fruits of manhood and the tents of Ham. Ham had a son named Put, whose name means landmark in Hebrew. Put is thought of as the father of the black Libyans and other African peoples. Many have twisted the story of the curse of Ham. While Noah's son Ham did not help him when told he fell drunk, Genesis 9 he did nine. make fun of his nude and inebriated condition in front of his other siblings. Nevertheless, this passage is open to numerous interpretations and is not the main focus of the story. Noah placed a curse on one of Ham's sons Canaan. While Noah's actions may seem exaggerated, it was a grave matter to disrespect one's father during that time period almost akin to a religious duty, although Noah's drunkenness appears to be accidental, resulting from his discovery of wine made from grapes, which had never been made before he unknowingly became intoxicated, as a consequence God did not punish him, it is essential to recognize that Ham and his three other children Kush Misar and Put are all believed to be the progenitors of various African and black populations. The Bible, through its genealogical accounts, connects these individuals to the ancient peoples of Africa, including the Egyptians, Ethiopians, and other African nations, however, it is important to approach these narratives with an understanding of their historical and cultural context as they represent ancient perspectives and beliefs. It is worth noting that the Bible is not the sole historical or anthropological source for understanding the origins and history of black and African people's archaeology is only one of several fields that scholars and researchers consult. Understanding the origins, migrations, and cultural developments of black and African peoples requires ongoing research and dialogue based on linguistics, genetics, and oral traditions. Our knowledge of the past is constantly evolving, so it is crucial to piece together the complex tapestry of human history. It must be emphasized that reading the Bible in a manner that implies the cursing of Africans is an enormous error and misunderstanding. The one cursed in the Bible is Canaan, grandson of Ham, not all Africans. The progenitor of the African and South Indian populations, Ham, was born before the flood and outlived most people by a wide margin. He was able to see the fifth and sixth generations of his family. 
some of whom were curiously related to his brother Shem. Although the precise age of Ham is not mentioned in the Bible, it is certain that he lived for at least 600 years, if not more. Multiple ideas and investigations have pointed to multiple potential locations for Ham's burial, but the exact location is still up for debate. His last resting place may be in Ethiopia or even Nubia, according to some. Most people think that Ham's tomb is in Sudan or Ethiopia, in Africa. However, others think it might be in Mesopotamia, the land of the Sumerians. Egypt, a nation shrouded in mystery and where millennial remains are still being unearthed, has even been mentioned as a possible location for his burial. Additional information of Ham's latter years, incidents involving Noah's family, and the genealogies of Ham are provided in the Book of Jubilees. Ham was unhappy when his youngest son Canaan opted to dwell in the country of Shem, which is now known as Israel. This story is told in an old Jewish book called Shem and Jath, which was regarded as official before the time of Christ. According to the Book of Jubilees Ham, Ken's second son was opposed to Canaan's plan to take those regions for himself. Cush, the Book of Jubilees, mentions that Ham was the first to establish a city and region after the flood. He named the place Male Flock in honor of his beloved wife. It is important to approach these ancient texts with careful consideration of their cultural and historical context. Mahi and others did not support Canaan's decision to reside in Shem's territory because they believed the lands in Africa were meant for Ham's descendants. Despite their objections, Canaan chose to remain in the land. Misunderstandings that spread false ideas or unfairly label some groups of people as cursed should be avoided since the Bible presents a story that is both complicated and multifaceted. Please consider subscribing and clicking the notification button to get future updates. We appreciate you watching and hope that this debate has helped you acquire insights about the Bible. Mark your calendars for upcoming episodes where we tackle important topics.